वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल ए ब्राइडरी ऑफ सेवेल डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन आई होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू सॉल्व द लास्ट असाइनमेंट ऑफ एडवांस्ड कंक्रीट टेक्नोलॉजी यू कैन सी द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन पोरोसिटी इज मेनली रिस्पांसिबल फॉर परमियेबिलिटी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ कंक्रीट Which type of porosity is mainly responsible for permeability characteristics of concrete? Okay, so generally the answer for this question is it is capillary porosity. You just listen the explanation. Permeability of concrete is a function of permeability of cement paste. Permeability of concrete is a function of permeability of cement paste come on permeability of agreates as well and it is also a function of transition zone permeability of these components in turn related to the permeability so the permeability of these components that is permeability of cement paste permeability of aggregate permeability of inter transition zone these are all in turn related to the porosity okay porosity and permeability need not be directly related sometimes and the interconnectivity of pores is generally responsible for high permeability so interconnectivity is generally responsible for a high permeability and generally paste capillary porosity is typically 30 to 40 percent that is 30 to 40 percent is of permeability is paste capillary porosity while normal aggregates will have 2 to 3 percent 2 to 3 percent capillarity is normal aggregates so finally the porosity that is mainly responsible for permeability characteristics is capillary porosity so capillary porosity is mainly responsible for permeability characteristics of concrete permeability characteristics of concrete Clear. So the answer for the first question is answer. It is B. Coming to second question, the sorptivity index of concrete mixes tends to reduce with increase in clinker replacement with SCMs. So generally, this is the sorptivity index of concrete mixes tends to reduce with increase in clinker replacement with SCM. It is a true statement. Generally, sorptivity means measure of mass of water absorbed by concrete over time. That is, sorptivity means measure of mass of the water absorbed by concrete over time. Absorbed by concrete over time. Okay, measures the rate of movement of water through concrete under capillary section. So the sorptivity also measures rate of movement of water through the concrete under. capillary section through capillary 
section. So generally when sorbitivity index in the water sorbitivity test if it is rate of movement of water it is a member hour and concrete quality. So when it is less than 0 and it is 6 to 10 and it is 10 to 15 when it is greater than 15. When sorbitivity test it is less than 0 we say it is a very good concrete and it is 6 to 10 mm per hour it is good concrete. When it is 10 to 15 it is poor and it will become very poor. So for all these reasons this statement is a true statement. Next coming to next question. Choose the reason which is not suitable for creation of anodic sites on steel. So out of this we need to know first of all what are all the reasons that are responsible for creation of anodic sites. If we know the reasons then we can able to delete which is not the reason for creation of anodic sites. So, first of all, we need to know the reasons. So, reasons for creation of anodic sites. So, the first reason is compositional variances on steel surface. Compositional variances on steel surface. Clear? This is the first reason. And coming to second reason, presence of dust particularly on the steel surface. Presence of dust or dead particularly on steel surface. This is the second reason. Coming to third reason, Presence of local differences in applied stress. When we are applying a stress, there is a local difference. That presence may cause creation of anodic sites. Presence of local differences on in applied stress. And Next reason is presence of stress concentration. When there is a local difference in some areas, the concentration of stress is more. Because of this reason also, the creation of anodic sites will be there. Presence of stress concentrations. And next reason is strained zones produced during cold working of metals may be more active. Strained zones produced during cold working of metals may be more active. Next reason is Difference of oxygen concentration at different sites on the steel. Difference of oxygen concentration at different sites of steel. Okay, so local difference of applied stress, stress concentration, and difference of oxygen. So these are all the correct statements. The only statement which is not is more active, cementaceous post is more active than phase concrete. Cementaceous post is more active than ferrite, ferrite phase. Generally ferrite phase is more active than cementaceous phase. Okay. So this is a wrong statement. Option C for question number 3. Coming to question number 4 of the assignment. In corrosion process of steel embedded in concrete. Which among the following components will suffer loss of material? Okay, you can see this. Generally, as the oxidation occurs, 
as the oxidation occurs at anodic sites there is a loss of electrons there is loss of electrons subsequently this component will suffer from loss of electrons okay so when where there is a reduction occurs at cathodic site there is reduction occurs at cathodic sites that is gain of electrons from hydroxyl ions gain of electrons from hydroxyl ions the reasons are follows you can say it is anodic reaction you can see so iron tends to iron ion fe2 plus two electrons will be lost coming to cathodic reaction half o2 plus h2o plus two electrons it will give two oh minus clear so because of all the reasons it is armor cathode corrosion process steel embedded in concrete which among the following components will suffer loss of material so generally anode will suffer loss of materials so option b for question number 4 coming to question number 5 from the listed options below choose the material which does not act as source so for alkali to initiate asr in concrete so generally aggregate cement and water all these are acts as source for alkali asr react so the option for this question is answer t so you can see that reaction of alkalis in concrete occurs with certain specific type of aggregates certain specific type of aggregates and alkali silica reaction when aggregates reactive from silica are used in alkali silica reaction when aggregate with reactive forms of silica are used and alkali carbonate reaction two types of reaction alkali silica reaction alkali carbonate reaction when carbonate aggregate with specific texture are used okay so for all these reasons these are all reacting so alkali silica reaction alkali carbonate reaction so and aggregates as well cement water aggregates these are all used as a source to initiate alkali silica reaction so answer is d for question number 5 coming to question number 6 which among the following characteristics of aggregates listed below are favorable for obviously a yes, sir so you can say the first option presence of fine grained siliceous material presence of volcanic glass presence of strained quartz presence of non fibrous silica so out of these four only fine grained siliceous material and volcanic glass are the responsible for alkali silica reaction fine grain and volcanic ash so answer it is generally not this 
So presence of volcanic glass and presence of strained quartz. Two and three are the answers. Option C for question number six. You can see that when silica present in amorphous form. When silica present in amorphous form, the common reactive aggregate. So, nicious sedimentary and metamorphic. Ignatius sedimentary metamorphic. Ignatius is rhyolite, rhyolite, and andesite, and dacite, and humus. So, these are all the igneous rocks and chert, some sandstone and flint. These are all sedimentary rocks and igneous and snitched pilite. These are all metamorphic. All these three will react. So, answer C for question number 6. Coming to question number 7 of the assignment, in terms of diffusion process related to durability of concrete, fixed first law is applicable for. So, there are two laws of fixed law. So, the first law is, you can say, first fixed law. So, of diffusion. So, generally it is steady state. So, J is equal to minus D dou C by dou X. Okay, you can say it is diffusion flux is proportional to concentration gradient. Where C is concentration, gradient is along the line, concentration gradient. Clear? So, Generally, this fixed law is related to chloride attack. So, it is called chloride attack. Clear? So, for this it is chloride attack. And coming to 8th question of the assignment. In terms of diffusion process related to durability of concrete, so fix the second law is more suitable for ingress. So you can say here it is, you can say it is fix first law is applicable for steady state, fix the second law is applicable for non steady state. Second fix law, it is non steady state. So this is dou C by dou D, that is concentration with respect to time is equal to dou by dou X of minus D dou C by dou X is equal to minus D dou square C divided by dou X square. This is a double differentiation. This is applicable chloride content. So we can measure by using fix the second law. What is a chloride content? Here. Next. Coming to ninth question, decracking failure in concrete is an indication of which type of deterioration mechanism? So, freezing and thawing is decracking failure. So, you can say here it is freezing and thawing. Damage. So, there are three types of failure. So, the first is phase failure. Second is aggregate failure. Third is aggregate, it is a decracking. Aggregate failure in the form of decracking. Next. 
aggregate failure is pop out. Okay, so for all this, so it is uh, freezing and drying. So answer C for question number 9. Coming to last question of the assignment, choose the statement which is not true in explaining the mechanism of freezing and thawing. We need to know what are all the mechanisms that will explain freezing and thawing. Then we can edit, we can delete this freezing and thawing mechanisms. You can say here it is. Mechanism of freezing and thawing. Generally, 9 to 10% up on freezing. So the critical saturation temperature of concrete is about 90%. Critical saturation is 90%. Clear? And so for this reason, the answer for this question is concrete will deteriorate if it remains frozen throughout its lifetime. So answer C for question number 10. Coming to question number 11 of the assignment. In the cementitious systems with SCMs, the increased porosity during carbonation occurs because of. So generally, carbonation increased porosity caused by precipitation of calcium hydroxide. That is CaOH. So, cementitious systems with SCMs show increase in carbonation depth. So, increase in carbonation depth. So, due to lesser carbonate content. And forcing of pore structure and increase in total porosity. Okay, so answer B for question number 11. And as your final FPTL exam is almost very near. So we have completed all the assignments successfully and I got a huge response especially from advanced concrete technology and very 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 thanks for the viewers that are watching advanced concrete technology and in the next NPTEL course which are all the courses that you are registering and you need solutions for that courses you can post comments Okay, I'll ask to comment. So in that situation, so you can post your comments. I will provide all the solutions for all the assignments only in civil engineering subjects, not any other subjects. Okay, thank you very much.